What's up everybody? Welcome to Caddy Wampus Acres. This is Jason. Today we got to get some pruning done, but uh, what in the heck? Ugh. Ugh. Would you look at that? Oh, come on, man. Obviously, we have waited too long to fix the chicken fence. Until I'm able to do it, looks like the chickens are going to be back to free ranging. Thankfully, we don't have any important crops that are outside because they would most certainly destroy it. I will say something funny though. Uh, these pigs are watching these chickens mighty closely, so I would recommend for them that they uh, stay away from these fine folks over here. Are you sleepy? You got yourself a little bed, a little dirt bed? Oh, oops, sorry, sorry. If you watch our videos, you know that uh, that Hurricane Zeta or Tropical Storm Zeta destroyed a uh, part of our fence sort of there were some obviously some weak points in the fence and it knocked it down well the chickens have like all good chickens do have found the weakness in the fence and they have all made their way out for those of you who don't know we used to actually free range our chickens um, all of them and let them roam the whole yard and it's glorious and it's great and they do their thing the problem is we lose a lot to hawks and I feel like um, that is a pretty big burden for us um, when we lose so many to predators and stuff like that. Also, we have a lot of issues with uh, losing crops and our garden to the chickens. So uh, we will be getting that fixed pretty soon, but um, I guess they're going to get a couple days of free ranging. Hopefully the hawks don't come and swoop in and realize that the chickens have made their way out. Today I want to get back here and show you guys how I'm going to prune this peach tree right here our snow angel peach tree all right what you see behind me here is our snow angel peach tree we planted this uh, a couple years ago and it has grown pretty massive uh, it's been in some of our videos and we've talked about our orchard and stuff because we had some bad experiences here on our property with some um, poorly trained peach trees that i ended up cutting down because it was i tried putting some work into them and they were not producing because they were not trained properly. They had gotten some diseases in them. And I will mention that peach trees and a lot of stone fruits are really bad for getting diseases and um, insects and stuff specifically here in Georgia. So although we are called the peach state, I don't know why that, may, why that is. Um, they are a harder fruit to grow that we've found. What I do want to talk about is this though. This snow angel peach tree is a early blooming peach tree. They do bloom as early as the end of March, uh, beginning of April, and actually produce fruit around that time. Which, for anybody who's ever grown peaches, knows that's sort of crazy and might not even believe me. You should be able to see right here behind me that it looks sort of like a wine glass or a goblet. That is the shape that you want. The main thing you want to hit with stone fruit specifically, and when I say stone, stone fruits, if you don't know what I'm referring to, that would be peaches, nectarines, plums, which I'm surrounded by them. I have some peaches over here, some, some younger peach trees over here, and I have some Santa Rosa plums over here. Because this is such an early bloomer, you're technically supposed to prune during dormancy of, of trees, and that's when you want to prune for shape. This peach tree, I'm going to take you up close here in a second. I'm going to show you that because this tree is such an early bloomer, it's already started to get pretty decent buds on it. But the goblet shape with stone fruits is very important. And if you look right here, you can see this goblet shape where it's got an open center. What you want is sunlight access to all the fruits that grow around there. If you were to let everything grow to the inside, like maybe what you've seen on apple trees or just normal trees, uh, you, will, you won't get sunlight to in here and the, the fruits will not develop properly and they won't be very sweet. And we all want sweet peaches. Because we are doing a backyard orchard or a, like a miniature food forest back here, our goal uh, from the guidance of some other people like MI Gardener and things like that is to have the canopies very close to where the canopies can sort of touch. Uh, and that's what we're developing here in our backyard homestead orchard. So you may say, wow, their trees are very close together. Well, that is the plan because we want our, um, they're all about eight, nine feet apart. And that seems sort of crazy to some people because we are not trying to develop this, this orchard where all of our trees are just massive for mass production. What we want 
is our pollinators like bees and things like that to be able to go from bloom to bloom to bloom and just unending just pollinate everywhere and everything will just be glorious and happy that's a lot of talk i want to get into pruning this peach tree yeah let me get inside a tree here ow ooh, ah. you can see these right here see that's the buds already starting to uh form in here this is some new wood that just grew this year and this is a very aggressively growing tree uh, but these buds are going to turn into fruits and and um, branches and things so we need to uh, basically shape this tree the way that we want it to look here in our orchard and we also want to say thank you to our Cattywampus crew for helping us get to 4,000 subscribers in just over a year. It's crazy, never would have expected it. Thank you guys so much. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, we'd really hope that you would consider hitting that subscribe button down below. And then right next to it is the bell notification. And if you click that bell, you'll be up to date with everything we're doing here in the farm. And please, if you like this video and you like our other videos, give us a thumbs up. There's a chance you may have more experience with pruning peach trees than we do. If you do, let us know in the comments down below what we did right, what we did wrong, and any suggestions uh, to us or anybody else that may be watching this video. Let's get back into it. I need to get a couple tools. All right, all right, I'm back. I got my ladder. I don't want to keep using a ladder in this orchard. It's just because this thing grew like crazy this year. So normally during pruning, we're not gonna need a ladder and normally definitely not for picking. We are gonna need a pair of um, pretty decent shears and a sharp, uh, we're just using a sharp folding saw. So I wanna show you some stuff. The first thing I wanna do in this peach tree is make sure I have all of the limbs and branches outside the middle of the tree. On every tree, you always wanna make sure you're getting rid of disease, dead, dying branches um, we don't really have too many of those currently but i'll check just in case while we're going along on stone fruits and fruit trees you don't want any that are crossing over and on these specifically you don't want any of that are shading or shaded does that make sense hopefully that makes sense i've been doing a pretty decent job of keeping the inside of here clear but i do just want to make sure that we have nothing here on the inside that could potentially cause us any growth on the inside of this tree always when you're pruning make sure that you're pruning very close to the tree and as paul gauchi says that says god puts a natural little line there for you and he's right i'm inside the tree and so if anything is like hit me in the face or right in my eyeballs i'm getting rid of it when i planted this tree i planted it um it was it was probably ooh, it was pretty tall it was probably six feet tall it was just like a whip but what I did is I knelt down, I trimmed it off at a 45 degree angle at my knee. And then from there on, we trained out these scaffolds just like this. And you see they're at pretty decent angles. All right, let's change angles. I apologize for our lighting. Hopefully you can make out the tree. That's most important. My face is not nearly as important. I've, I've cleared out the middle of the tree. So we've kept that goblet style. Um, what I need to do next is because we don't want our trees to go much above like eight feet tall. I need to take my saw and my shears and take down any of these branches that are going straight up and are so high that I can't reach them. When you're trying to shape your tree, make sure you're paying attention to the way that everything's already growing. If I want this branch going this way and it's going up, my wisest thing to do would be to trim this off probably right in this region but I want to look at the overall shape. As with pruning anything, pruning trees can be very scary um, but remember with a tree, you're going to have decades with this tree to grow and shape and everything. So don't be overly scared. You can actually prune away a third of the tree's weight without doing harm to the tree in each, basically each pruning season. So that's just something to remember. You're not going to kill. You may get less. You may get less fruit if you sort of mess up a little bit, but it's okay. We're, 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 we're homesteaders, we're farmers, we're gardeners. We're going to live, we're going to learn, and we're going to get to, if, if we get to eat 10 or 12 peaches off this next year, I'm good as long as it stays in the shape that I want it to. This branch goes straight up, so I'm going to cut it to an outward growing branch, and I must say is covered with blooms so hopefully you can see here i've taken this branch that shot straight up 
and shaped it to go out this direction. You see these buds on here? Each one of them grows out in a different direction. So whichever way that you want this tree to grow future-wise, like maybe the next growing season, if you're focusing on growing that bud out, make sure it's facing the direction that you want it to grow, okay? All right, I'm gonna speed it up and I'm just gonna take a few minutes to shape it the way that I want to shape it. I want you to take a look and see how the tree looks now. You see how I have these branches going out like this? They call them scaffolds. So this is this is what I've been trying to go for. The other one that I cut off was crossing into this one. And although it was a massive branch, it was gonna cause um, issues down the road. So we got rid of it. And so now we have all these like, scaffolds and this is what would be referred to as sub-scaffolds. All right, I just need to get the tops off of some of these and and we'll be all done. And the heading cuts, as I call them, when you have a branch coming out and you nip it off past an hour growing bud, they're always going to be helpful to increasing the size and uh, the actual diameter of that branch. Because basically what happens is the growth is trying to come out, you nip it off right there, and then so all that energy goes back in and strengthens that branch. Chickens have found their way into the orchard under attack. Oh, get out of the strawberries. Get out of there. Okay, well that's it. Some of you are like, oh my God, what did he do to that tree? Just wait and see. I challenge you that. If you're freaked out now, stay around with the channel and just wait and see what happens um, next year. And, uh, probably around February, March, and we'll see what it looks like then, okay? Well, that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We really, really appreciate all of you, all you friends out there who, who watch every week and watch all of our videos and, and just um, give us positive feedback. We love it. We love you guys. Please stay tuned to our channel because I promise, friends, we're going to have plenty more homesteading good stuff for you every week. And always remember that those who homestead are home fed. We'll see you guys next time. Messing stuff up, huh? You messing stuff up? Is that what you're doing?